Hey, I'm Zach. I'm Amy. Welcome to another edition of Rockin' Comics, and today we've got um, a new batch of books. We have an A means awesome, and that'll be enough. Real quick, a recap. We didn't have a video last week, but we did have some decent books that came out. I wanted to touch on Justice League and International Number 2. I thought the quality went up. Yeah, way up. So as scared as we were about issue one, number two uh, shows some promise. Mm -hmm. That one may stick around for a while. The other one was uh, action number two. Mm -hmm. Continued uh, really well. Really liked action number two. You thought we missed something? I, f I started reading it and I thought I missed something. I don't think we but did. But then I figured, I, I, think I, I think it just kind of picks up and you got to kind of catch your brain up a little bit. <laughs> I don't think it's bad. I mean, it's not like a bad thing. I was just confused. Fair enough. It's like, wait, what happened? But Action Comics okay. continues to be my good favorite super, Superman book. It's good, yeah. Better than Superman, yeah. in my opinion. The other one was... Detective. Detective, which mm -hmm. I still really like. You thought the art was a little better? A little bit better on the art. Um, not loving it the way I wanted to. But that's okay. Because we'll get to a Batman that we both really like. Yes. So... Real quick, um, a couple titles by Marvel that came out this week. Uh, Alpha Flight, number five of eight. I've talked about how I'm disappointed in this title, and I don't know why. Uh, we talk a lot about it in the podcast at rockandcomics.com. But basically, there are nuggets of this story that I really enjoy, like the fact that, that Puck is a little crazy and thinks he's been to hell. The fact that you have they hired the Taskmaster to train normal Joes to fight in mining mechs. But for me, the whole thing doesn't work a lot. We talk about why in the podcast, but I'm on till this story arc's over, then I'm done with Alpha Flight. And that hurts my heart. <laughs> you don't care because you hate Canada. It's, it's, I do hate Canada. <laughs> <laughs> my best friend's from Canada. <laughs> um, just saying. I'm just not, I don't know. I'm just so uninterested in it. I, I don't know. I don't know. That, that's sad that I'm I so mean, freaking uninterested in it. <laughs> I've said before, the boxes that need to be ticked for me are action, story, and art, and... Maybe half-checking a couple of them? Maybe. It's like, you like put your pin there and you're like... Some, some of the action's pretty good. <laughs> the art doesn't throw me in the story. I'm confused. So, moving on to uh, New Avengers number 17. This one. <sighs> okay. I like the story. I love the art by Mike Deodato. I like Bendis' story. I do. I have a couple problems. The main one is this. See the cover? See the new guy, Daredevil? Not in the book. Stop it. This dude? The thing. Not in the book. And, um, this dude? Iron Man. Not on the cover! But in the book! Stop it. You want me to buy a book, you tease me with a cover, and I open it up and half the people aren't in there? Stop that! My other major problem with it, and I talked about it last time, or did we? I don't know. The main bad guy is Norman Osborn. Yes, we did talk about it last time. Again! Yeah. Oh, but I trust Bendis enough to make it work, so I'm going to continue on. It's not enough for me to hate this story, but it did, it did disturb me. <laughs> so. It did disturb you. I was really looking forward to seeing Daredevil and nothing. We got some decent action. We got some insight into Norman and his new cronies. Yeah. Which are basically every bad guy ever in the Marvel Universe. But, no Daredevil, no thing. He was in the last book. I don't know where he went. He's like, I'm gonna go uh, have myself a drink. Apparently. Why do you guys do all that? So, those were the only two Marvel books I got. I wish I was more excited <laughs> about it. But, I'm not. What are we gonna do? Um, on the list, we have a new round of number two, Suicide Squad. Probably going to be the next one cut from my list. Story I'm cool with, action I'm cool with, the art is not selling it for me at all. I'm sorry. I want to like this book. I kind of do. I might be around for one more issue, maybe two, but it's eventually going to have to, something's going to have to give because I can't afford to keep buying everything I see that is neat. That's probably one that's going to have to go. And for me, it's the art in this case. Mm -hmm. So, I see what you mean, actually. And you aren't a huge fan because... Yeah, it's just not my genre. Meh. So, yeah. It's a little more violent, a little bloody, which I enjoy, but... Uh, no. You had a lot of that from that one. However, 
Frankenstein and the Agent of Shade. Yes. Agents of Shade. Man, I like this book. This one surprised me. I picked it up on a whim, number one. I've added it to my pull list now. It's really good. The art is phenomenal. Yes. We talked. This art on the cover is not representative of the art that's inside here. I it, feel like, but it, I mean, it's not like bad. No. But I think if people see this, they're like, what are they talking about with the art? Because it's not what we're talking about. We're no. talking about. Well, the splash page for one yeah. inside is um, ridiculous. And stuff like this. I mean, that's all very green. <laughs> so I'm not sure why. <laughs> It is very green. It's very green. Um, so I wish that there was something a little more contrasty that I could pull out here. Hopefully I, I can find an image and it'll be down there yeah, where and, you can see and it. Yeah, doodly do. Um, but this is a book that I'm, I'm really digging. It's a team book. It's got monsters. It's got cool action. It's got quirkiness. It's got some decent, you know, there's a nice origin story in here that you need. And it's not, it's a little shoehorned. But not heavy-handed, really. No, but... I like the way that they're a slow roll in the introductions. So, oh man, such a good book. Now, Deathstroke number two. I, I love Death, Deathstroke as a character, but this felt like a second one shot in, and we're at issue two. So, need to, they need to pick up the story arc, in my opinion. Dude's heads go bounce, and that one's kind of crazy. <laughs> I think that's funny. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really like blood and guts, but I'm like, eh. <laughs> sorry. Laughing at the decapitation, which is fine. Yeah. So for me, Deathstroke, I'm probably not going to grab number three. It's not a bad book. It's got decent art. It's got decent action and a decent story. But for me, the overarching story arc, I haven't found it yet. Right. We uh, don't know what's going on. I mean, yes, he's besides, a badass. Yeah, besides the fact that he's cutting people's heads off and there's a brain and I don't... I mean, that's it. He does just whip up on an entire bar full of bad guys. Yeah. I mean, that's... That's it. And he fights a guy that kind of looks like a Transformer yeah. uh, love like child a, with a Volkswagen. Like a bus with the... Yeah. Yeah. Eh, his name's Rotor. It, the, the villain in this actually annoyed me a little bit. It felt like... <laughs> I don't know. It felt like something Vince McMahon from the WWE would have thought of. Like, back in 92. Uh, his name's Road Rage. He looks like a car... He has wheels for feet. Uh, I just wasn't as thrilled with the bad guy. So, Deathstroke, it's just, yeah. while I like the book, it's probably going to go bye-bye next time. A book I'm jazzed about, though, is Demon Knights. I think, for me, this book is what Justice League Dark should be and isn't, so I'm okay with it because it's kind of filling that role for me. You've got supernatural guys in there. You've got the demon, who I like. You've got Madame Xanadu, who I know nothing about. But enjoy so much more in this book than I do in Justice in League Dark. <laughs> I like the art. There's some humor in it. It's in the, the action is good. So if you're paying attention, art, action, story. Check, check, check. We like it. And you even like the art. I really like this art. I mean, there's just... I don't know. This is what a fantasy book should look like. Yeah. You know? Um, it's just the flavor is just right. Um, you don't... You don't open this and you're not confused about what you're looking at. <laughs> no, you're not. You know, it just works, works right. And, you know, sometimes that's really just what it is. It's getting the right art with the right story and it works together. Yes. <laughs> that's kind of why we like Frankenstein because yes. from a story and art aspect, those mesh so well. It works. It works together. And if you open it up, you'll see what we're talking about. Yes. Now, moving on, Batman and Robin number two. I think, without a doubt, Rockin' Comic of the Week. Rockin' Comic of the Week. For yeah, men and Robin people. <laughs> and that's... And we talk about it, and once again, in the podcast a lot, that's why this book works. Because it is Batman and Robin. It's not uh, Batman and Robin go fight people. <laughs> Which they, they, they do. do. But it's about Batman and Robin. Um, they could have named this Bruce and Damien. Yes. And it would... And work. I still would have bought it. I would be like, fantastic, I'm buying that. Because this they're doing what they need to do with this book, which is address that relationship. Um, I mean, they, they dealt with that with Batman and Robin when it was Damien and um, Dick Grayson, too. Right. You know, that was a lot of the two of them together and the way they kind of butt heads and Damien's relationship with the other Robins on the whole. And now here is his relationship with Bruce. I mean, he's a twisted little kid. 
So, yeah. you know... Which is why we love him. That uh, that interpersonal stuff is just... I think that's what's fascinating about Damien. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I'm so glad that they're going with that angle. And it's not like there's no... You know, there's no action in this. There's action in this. There's some cool stuff in here. I love that. That... This, that's, where he says some... What's he say? Welcome to what, hell, He basically. says, what the hell? And there's Bruce all up in his face going, that's exactly where you are tonight. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's Batman. <laughs> and it's images like that that make that book work for yeah. me from a Batman aspect. From the Bruce and Damien aspect, it works on all kinds of levels. And you've got the nice play with Alfred, who's always been the, the, the father figure. And he is, once again. There is a drawback in this book, and that's the introduction of a character named Morgan, who it's written from the point of view that we should know who, should he, is. Know who he is. I don't know. You don't know. We looked online. They don't know. So if you know, if you know, can you tell? Can you tell me? Because I don't. But we think that that's Ace the Bat Hound. <laughs> <laughs> Could be Ace the Bat Hound. We don't know. I, I hope so. So <laughs> that just makes me giggle. Yeah. So <laughs> and the exploding barrel of candy. There is that. <laughs> so the fact that they introduce a character that well. They reveal a character, I should say, not yes. introduce him. But it's, <laughs> yeah. but it's written in a way that they think we know who he is, but we don't. We don't know who he is. And we talk about a lot in the in the podcast, the podcast. about the where that why that's so wrong. Yes. Why that misses. I don't want to get into it again because uh, we'll we don't have out. another hour, and I <laughs> it'll just get me rolling. Yeah. But all in all, in spite of that one thing, that's still Rockin' Comic of the Week. Yes, absolutely. However, there are two very strong contenders for that title that did not quite make it. And of course, yes. one has been disallowed from having it ever again. Because it's our Rockin' Comic series of forever. Forever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever. Super ever, Dinosaur ever. number five. Raptor Rampage. <laughs> I just feel like I love their, you know, their subtitles, too. Yeah. It's just, oh, God. It's just so clever. Everything about this book is clever. The art is fantastic. It's cartoony, but not oversimplified or dumbed down. Yeah. And nothing. This book is accessible for children, but it's not dumbed down. Yes. Um, and I think that that's what's really important and why it's such a good book. And I don't have kids. I don't want kids, but this is a great book for kids. And I love that part of it. Because I. I know as much as people think comic books are for children, I don't think that there's much out there that's actually quality for children. No. And this absolutely is. Absolutely. This really is. I just actually recommended it to a friend of mine and his daughter because he went to free comic book day and came back with some books that he was like, I don't think it's going to work for her. Yep. I was like, grab this book, read it to her. Yep. It'll be awesome. We recommended this to a coworker of ours who has a son that uh, loves to read. Yeah. Um, and he's six, I think. Sure. Six or seven. Sure. Um, and... I, I don't know that she's picked it up for him yet, but I know he would love this yes. if he got a hold of it. Because this is... It's dinosaurs. Who doesn't love dinosaurs? With you, robot you, arms! With robot <laughs> arms. <laughs> and it's even better... <laughs> he gets an even bigger suit. Yes. Uh, with S Super Dinosaur gets a big suit. Derek is... Derek gets a suit. Yeah. Um, and then they combine. They combine. Into a giant suit. Into a big old suit. With da Derek's up here with his, and the little, little, like, in the tummy of it is Super uh, Dinosaur doing, like, this tiny little arm. So you have weird science, <laughs> dinosaurs, big and small. Yes. Giant robots. <sighs> they wrap up the first story arc in this issue. Yes. But then they open a whole new avenue for the next story arc, which... Proves that this book is not only fun and but it's smart. Yes, it's it's a quality product. They're doing things to take this to such a, a different level, but they're not elevating it to where the kid in the story I just saw in the back is ten. Um, so that's probably about where they're aiming. Right. You know, it's uh you know grade school age uh, kids that could read this. And I'm looking at these letters, and it's like 14, 7 is dictated by his dad. Uh, <laughs> sincerely, Chad, age 38. Um, I mean, that just gives you an idea that this... It's so good. Pick it up. If you haven't done it, grab it. I just can't say enough. About and we didn't talk about it in the podcast, and I'm so <gasps> oh disappointed. Oh my god, I know! <laughs> Amy didn't see this at first. Coming this December, coloring book. Deluxe. 
coloring book. And what did you first say when I said that? I bet there's activities in it. Because it's a deluxe coloring book that means that there's activities, there's going to be crosswords and mazes and all kinds of stuff. And Yes. Super yes. Dinosaur Coloring Book. I'm so, so excited. Buying. I'm so buying it. So excited. And the art in it is by, I mean, it's this artist is doing all the art in the coloring book. Right. How, I mean, how cool is that? I just love, I love that this is appropriate for children, and it's in such a smart way, yeah. and a good quality it makes me so excited. Yeah. So it's excited. Image Comics, thank you for putting that out. It's Bravo. such a good book. Bravo to Robert Kirkman and Jason Howard. Absolutely. You're just knocking it out of the park every single time. Yeah. God, I mean, how... <laughs> I mean, it's almost, like, unfair. It is. That every single time. And that's why it doesn't... We can't even vote for it's it It's in its own category. <laughs> it has to be. So... Uh, so good. Now, moving on to the last book. It, this is not new. It came out a month or two ago, but it's number one. It's called The Cape. It's an adaptation by, of a story by Joe Hill of the same name. Man, if you're looking for a, a wonky, superhero -y I love that we go from this... To this. To that. This is polar opposite of They're that. They're very polar opposite. Don't buy this and read it to your kids. <laughs> without a doubt. Um, this guy on the front is a douchebag who has a cape that has superpowers. That's all you need to know. Yeah. It, but man, it's good. It, the the art is really good. You don't like the guy at all, and that's good. That's good. You don't like him, or it, you shouldn't. Yeah, you shouldn't. You might. You shouldn't though. Right? It's just it's surprising and it's weird and everything that's wrong with this book is why it works. Um. It yeah, it really is intriguing. But I, mean, it, it, I just don't know what to make of it because it is so weird in its own little way. Yeah. And yet it's like, okay, I wanna I wanna read the next one. Yeah. I wanna know more. I wanna read this story that the guy wrote and, and figure out what's going on and So number two came out this week, so I'm gonna have to grab it. Because it's just man, this one really surprised me. And I think if it if were more appropriate for everybody, it might have made Rock and Comic of the Week for me. Yeah. But it's it's it really is that good. It really is. I'm a big fan already, but the guy's a douchebag. And it says from the writer of Lock and Key. I don't know if that's... Um, it's a quality I, book. I'm assuming that that's talking about the Jason Ciara Mella? Yes. Is okay. I assume so. That's what I'm assuming, that it's not also <laughs> no. based on a story. And what I like about this book that I noticed is um, Joe Hill is the creative consultant. So he's not just like, this is a cool story, do you mind if I adapt it? They're... They're working like hand in hand. Right. Hand in hand is probably not the right word. But the fact that he's got this input from the guy makes me feel like this is probably very true to that story that he wrote. And I like that. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to do that and you're going to do it right, then work with the guy. So that that makes that's kind of even more intriguing about this book. And yeah. Why it kind of makes you want to go and read that other story, too. Absolutely. And, and see what's, uh, what's the deal. But I'm such a fan. It, it's such a quality item. IDW, nice job. Good stuff. Weird. But the, <laughs> And weird. Just, I just don't know what else to describe it. It is. <laughs> but that, man, that, for some reason, that always gets me going when it's odd like that. Yeah. So, thumbs up. It's good. Now, uh, that's it for our books, so it's time for a little Amy's Awesome. Theme song here. Not really. Oh. <laughs> oh. No theme song. Same list. We got a list. The uh, Amy's Awesome for the week, Young Justice. We talked really briefly once, way, 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 way back, like we've been doing this for like an eternity. <laughs> like Sometimes it feels like it. <laughs> um, <laughs> talked about Young Justice. I'm not a regular TV watcher, so I've missed so much of Young Justice. I think I've only actually watched one episode on the TV. Uh, everything else I've watched on YouTube. She's a good way to get in trouble, by the way. And you're like, what's on the YouTube? Young Justice. <laughs> Search. You might want to do that when you have some free time. If you're in the middle of something, like you're like, I'm just going to do this while I'm eating dinner. Let me just look. Because then it's like three hours later and you don't know what the hell you did all day. <laughs> uh, and you've watched Young Justice, so I guess there's nothing really wrong with that. No. But the laundry's not done and the dogs are like, what the hell, I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> and now you need a snack, because dinner was three hours ago! So what are you going to do? Um, it, God, it's just a really good piece of animation. 
one of the very few things that Cartoon Network is doing right right now. Because if you turn on Cartoon Network, uh, most of the time I turn it right off. Uh, I don't stay on Cartoon Network for very long, if I can help it. Oops. <laughs> Uh, the most that I think I've watched Cartoon Network is, uh, they got rid of Saved by the Bell in the morning on TBS. So I've been looking for something else to watch when I get ready for work, and Pokemon airs at 7 o'clock in the morning. Wow. So I've been watching Pokemon reruns. On Going Cartoon old Network, school. Because that's what's on the TV. It's sad that Pokemon's <laughs> old school. Pokemon is the best thing on Cartoon Network at 7 o'clock in the morning. It's either that or Spongebob. That's a Nickelodeon thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. It's on, yeah, it's on the other one. So, uh... Or, um, there's a pirate show on Disney, like, the Disney Kid Channel. Yeah. <laughs> with, wow. with, with a very little Captain Hook and a very little Smee and little kid pirates. And I've watched it occasionally. And at the end of the show, they have a pirate band. And that's the best part of the show is the pirate band. But anyway. Amy's Awesome has taken a <laughs> bizarre left turn I into digress. What the Hellville. I... <laughs> Wow. I digress. None of that happened in the podcast. <laughs> that's why I'm so stunned by this. I'm that's like, for what? Our, that's for our animation special. We're going to talk about the cartoon pirates. Yes. <laughs> we have a yet-to-be-planned or produced animation special coming soon. With the pirate band. Apparently. I'm saying if Deathstroke was a pirate, <laughs> we would so be into that. <laughs> Young Justice. I liked it too. <laughs> I do. I like uh, uh, Aqualad or whatever the hell. Aqualad. His name is. We got Aqualad. We got Speedy. We got Kid Flash, and we got Robin. Uh, it's Dick Grayson, Robin, and Wally West, Kid Flash. I'm really sorry. I don't care enough to know Speedy or Aqualad's names. <laughs> Speedy wasn't in there for long because Artemis showed up. Yes. Now um, that's their that's their bow slinger now, Artemis. Right. Which Speedy was in the original team, right? Sure. I'm pretty sure that Speedy was in the original like. The Teen Titans. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back yeah. in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what I like about it, though, is it's not Teen Titans, it's really. It's not Teen Titans. It's... And, and if I say Teen Titans, it's Teen Titans. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean the Cartoon Network. I mean, that Cartoon Network thing that came out that I liked was a completely different flavor. Yes. And I, But I like both of them. Mm -hmm. But one of them was skewed a little bit younger and was funny and mm -hmm. intended to be very funny. Yes. There were some dark episodes that, God, they were so good when they did that, too. <laughs> they were really dark, though. Um, God, but that was great. Yes. Great, great, great stuff. Um, this is like those episodes, but then they kind of turn that dial up even a little bit more, because mm -hmm. this is not juvenile. None of this no. is juvenile. Um, and they do such a good job of with the characters of everybody involved. Mm -hmm. And with the character interaction of everybody, Aqualad is... I love Aqualad. Yeah, he's pretty cool. He's a really cool kid. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't really know anything about Aqualad, but I like Aqualad. Yeah. Um, he's he's kind of got this attitude to him, and of course, uh, Kid Flash has an attitude, because that's Kid Flash. Um, so you've got these, you know, they're all kind of button heads with each other, and then Robin and Kid Flash are like buddy-buddy, and they got this thing going, and they <laughs> do such a great job with everybody, with those relationships, and you have, like, the, you know, every now and then Batman will show up and everything, and they'll be like, you kids. <laughs> and it, it's almost like I feel like it should be, like, uh, how they did in Peanuts, where they only show them from, like, the next <laughs> day, like, they don't even show the head. <laughs> right. That would just crack me up. That would be good. Because it feels like that. You know that they're there, and they have a presence. They show up, but it's not... Um, Batman is telling Robin and the Teen Titans and Young Justice to go do this. Right. They're operating on their own, which is sort of where they're getting into trouble, because they're operating on their own. Mm -hmm. um, but man, it's just, from top to bottom, it's really, really good stuff. Um, the unfortunate part is that I'm sure it's somewhere on Cartoon Network. Good luck finding it, because uh, hardly anything stays put on Cartoon Network no. these days. Um, and you can go out and buy DVDs, but it's not the full set. No. You can buy a couple episodes here and then a couple episodes there. They've got a volume one out. Volume two is coming out two. next week, I think, something or in two like weeks, that. something like that. So, and then season two doesn't start until they. Uh, if Wikipedia is correct, it doesn't start till 2012. Should, I I've heard it soon. I don't know when. So. So um, like, if you want to catch up, you're gonna have to YouTube like I did, and. Uh, do it when you know you have time. 
<laughs> you're gonna you're gonna regret it. I you can't just sit there and be like, I will just watch part one. Yeah, no. It doesn't happen that no. way. <laughs> and I and I like it too. I like the the art style's really good and the stories are fun, so I agree. So there you go. There you go. That's Amy's awesome. Little this, diversion uh, there, but uh, we got back. Was little Pokemon. Wow. Pirates. Pirate band. <laughs> it's really great. I don't know. But I think that's it for this week. Uh, next week, more frivolity, more fun, more comics, more awesome, and more random crap that we think of. Possibly a pirate band, if I can swing it. Told ya! <laughs> I think that's it for now. I'm Zach. I'm Amy. Bye! Bye.